This trip, we're gonna be heading to Eagle Nook Resort, which is perfectly situated in Barclay Sound, one of British Columbia's premier fishing destinations for salmon and halibut. To get there, we took the boat over from Euclid, which was about a 30 to 35 minute run throughout the picturesque Broken Island Group. So you made it? We made her. We, we stopped a little bit and uh, did a little filming. Yeah, no. how's it going? Yeah. yeah. yeah very crazy. It, uh, it was a nice little sunset there, yeah. Pretty easy to find if you get the coordinates. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> yeah. good. It's yeah, awesome. Perfect. It's tucked in here. Yeah, I've never been here. No, yeah. you know that. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, Dan's cool. going to be jumping on the boat with you guys for sure. the next couple yeah, of days. Unfortunately, you get to fish with me oh. and not Jeff, but you All know. All good. That works. Let's see if we can make Very it easy. Yeah. You guys don't even need this, probably. Eh? You, should be, you should be fine. Yeah. But honestly, we have a game plan. I have it all figured you out. You have it all mapped out? Yeah. I we're like going that. Fishing. Make my job easy. <laughs> oh, we're going, going fishing. fishing. Yeah, I like that. No, most of the fish have been hanging on the outside of the group. <laughs> yeah. Up to the Red Can and Tofino there. Or, uh, sorry, you kill it. So, okay. um, basically, we were at sale basically all day today. Yeah. And uh, it was good fishing. I was mean, it? just rough weather, but good fishing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm supposed to lay down a bit. Oh, it's going to be night and day. Like, tomorrow might be a little lumpy in the little morning, and then Wednesday looks like... Beautiful. Yeah. Um, decent amount of springs around, same with coho. Yeah. So well, it's just starting to come in, hey? Yeah, yeah it's been pretty steady for the last week yeah. or so. Um, most of the boats getting their limit of coho or close to mm -hmm. um, out there, and uh, same with Chinooks, too. So, awesome. yeah, yeah. coho fun. Some pinks kicking around. But I, I they're just seeing the odds. Some they're mega just pinks. They're it's just crazy. Pink. It's bright chrome. Yeah. yeah. It's like they're beautiful. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. good. That's um, good. That's awesome. Yeah, and they're kind of pushing into the sound too, like on the edges. Yeah. So Austin was good today. Yeah. And uh, Sail was good today. Cool. So there's fish sitting on both both sides. Awesome. Well, we'll go. We'll yeah. go try and find them. Let's do it. That's all we can do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our <laughs> fleet of boats here. A flame sticker. Oh, so that's yeah, wild. That's a bit of a story about that. <laughs> uh, Sean runs this boat. He is literally a diehard. Uh, Canucks fan. He has like really? tattoo on his. He's hard. <laughs> everything. He's hardcore. Yeah. So uh, we were up here early season, and it was before the playoffs in Calgary. And uh, <laughs> I'm a bit of a Flames fan, so Calgary and Vancouver were playing, and uh, you might remember the game. There was apparently a bad call. They went into overtime, and he was just losing it. And we had a bet. <laughs> they that, were, they, they, Canucks were up three-two with like two minutes left. That's right. Bad call. Penalty box, scores side 3 3 OT, and Calgary ends up winning in OT. But in that time frame, Calgary was down. He made a bet saying Calgary would win. And the loser had to either put, he had to put a uh, Canuck sticker on his boat or Calgary sticker oh, on his you boat. Know who won? I the Flames. I <laughs> won here. Yeah. And on top of it, he puts uh, it on crooked. <laughs> just, to, just to put salt in the wound, eh? That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, so he's man. devastated. He's been grumpy for yeah. a few days because yeah. I literally got, I had to order the stickers on Amazon. and oh, you, you, They just showed up a week or two ago. You work into that. Yeah. yeah, and I just stuck them on there. I wasn't really, it was oh, a busy day. And then they ended up crooked. That's what, hilarious. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Good story. After getting settled in, we had a great meal at the lodge, and then we got some rest. The next morning, we met up with Dan and headed out to Sail Rock to target salmon. There's been multiple times where I've actually driven right past Sail Rock and haven't fished it. So to be able to get in here today and kind of learn it with Dan, you know, find the ins and outs of where these fish like to hold in here, and I think it's gonna be a great experience. What are we thinking? We got all kinds of white hoochies. I like that kind of chartreuse yeah, uh, like flasher that. too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we had uh, we had a few of those. Whoa. We had a few of those made up, and they've caught a couple fish, which oh, is good. That's the color. That's the salty dog. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a hot ticket. How deep you saying here, Dan? Uh, right on the bottom. So let's go down like 75. I'm an odd number guy, so 73, 77 works. Oh man, just having autopilot on a day like today when you're getting set up and it's pretty lumpy in here right now. And I mean, most times you can't even let go of the steering wheel like this, you'll be spinning around, the wind would push you, but at least we can operate the uh, the downriggers here, but you keep an eye on where the other boats are, just have a heading hold and when we want to make a turn, just put it on standby, turn the boat and then hit it again. Super, super handy feature. 
Well, we're fishing. We, we brought are. him in. We're, we're in. in. <laughs> it's all it's all a piece of cake from now from now on. Oh, he's there. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was a good bite there. Yeah. Black that. That was a good hit. A little bit deeper. The deeper rod there, 87. 87, yeah. That didn't take long. We've only been in here for about 10 minutes. So uh, trained professionals here. <laughs> That's a nice spring. little spring. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. What do we want to do? Well, we let's release this guy to start. What's up? We'll release this guy to start. Sure. Nah. sure. Yep, no more hook. Nicely done. Good to turn that uh, wind so fast and pop that inside out. Yes, he, he smashed that, eh? Sure did. I think fishing on the west coast of Vancouver Island presents a ton of opportunities to anglers, and this is why I think people should target this fishery. Each area as you move up and down the coast is unique in itself. I mean, there's some areas where you're fishing primarily offshore, and then there's other areas where you're fishing inshore. So your tactics and how you are trying to pinpoint where these fish are holding are different. So one thing that's really uh, cool about Barkley Sound is you kind of get to experience both of those fisheries depending on the time of the year. A lot of times you can head out offshore to what a lot of people would call the big bank and you're fishing in water that's a couple hundred feet deep and a lot of times these salmon are traveling right on the bottom in the mud. So off a of downrigger, I mean, that's a long, long ways to go. But other times when these fish are hugging in tighter and traveling along the rocks, you'll be fishing in pockets that are you know, 30, 40 feet deep. So your whole strategy changes on how to target these fish. Look at, oh, look at them back there. Oh, geez, right on the surface. No, we're pretty fortunate. This Barkley Sound has a lot of fishing areas. Ooh. Oh, geez, look He's, at that thing. Oh, He's not going. happy. He's not happy, sorry. It's okay. I'm more excited about this fish than anything. He is Holy not giving up. Jeez. There's a lot of line out there. We're starting to move them a bit. Yeah. Oh, oh my Jesus. God, that was crazy. <laughs> he tried to get you. He's a strong fish. There's his there. tail there. Oh, oh, jeez, he's a nice fish, dude. <laughs> did you see him there? I did. Oh, yeah. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. My arm's on fire. This is awesome. What a fight, this guy. It's incredible. What do you want to do? Do we uh, you know let what? him go or let's, do you want to? Af after that epic fight by this guy, let's let him go. Right. Hey? Let's do it. I think he deserves it. <clears throat> He's still got a ton of energy. Sure does. Yeah, we'll pop this guy off. All he right. was super nice, super cooperative. Great, great fight. What's Not that ready. part about Look cooperative? <laughs> what? Like, he, how much energy does this thing have? <laughs> This thing is nuts. It's got a tail Are you all right? Face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Control your fish, would you? <laughs> this guy's a warrior, man. He's, he's hooked in the corner of his mouth, so like, he's, got lots perfect. Of, he's got lots left in him. There we go. Nicely done. Right on. Right on. Was, you know what? That One was hook. awesome. <laughs> oh, yes. man. That was good. Yeah, double header. Go. You're on. Double You're off. off. I'm oh. off. That's two. That's a Chinook here. He's just screaming. Yeah. Oh, another nice one. Look at this one. The same bite as like that bigger fish I caught today. This was just sucking on it. I might have to go under you. Man, this there feels like go. another decent. There you go. Do the dance. Yep. Nicely done. Swap side. Beauty <laughs> up. Oh, yeah. This is awesome. Oh, awesome stuff. Have you seen yours yet? I haven't seen it yet. It's just kind of... Mine's still in You're still another on. continent right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Beauty. Let's make this really exciting. I'll try and net this guy okay. by myself. You deal with that fish. We'll, can, we'll keep this one if I can... Oh my He's God. just He's bucking, eh? This is crazy. Oh, 
Well, mine's gone. It is? Yeah, this got off right there. Ah. So it's all up to you now. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, well, we'll keep this guy. Okay. You want me to help out? Oh, well, sure, if you're there. Or do you want to do nope, it? You, you can do go it if, you're, if you're there, go ahead. <laughs> I shouldn't have said ready? anything and just watched you. <laughs> yeah, that would have been entertaining. Ah. Nice. Nice fish. Beauty. Dan, another beautiful Chinook here. Great fight, good awesome. bite. And we doubled up there. We doubled up. But, you know, I'll forgive you. I, I know you don't get a chance to, to fight many fish anymore these days. You're always driving the boat, but... Uh, you know what? I get paid to catch fish for we, guests. I don't get paid yeah. to play well, you fish. Know what? I, you know what? You need to take some of your own advice. Keep your rod tip up. Keep, right. keep the tension on the fish. We'll get oh, the next one. That was a good fight, both that, of those that fish. That was awesome. Yeah. No, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, job. we got a little bit of a snap happening here. We'll get, get this guy put away and focus on the rods the here. The village is not going hungry. Ooh, that's awesome. That's a good eater right there. Right on. Yeah. After a fantastic first day on the water, we headed back to the lodge to participate in the salmon head recovery and DNA sampling program that Eagle Nook Resort proudly devotes a lot of their time and effort to. Released some beautiful fish today, kept a couple fish for some table fare here, and, and now we're just gonna kind of walk through the process that you uh, you kind of take the yeah. lead, take charge at this, at, at the resort here. Yeah, and... so taking on the responsibility to help out with Department of Fisheries, doing DNA sampling, and uh, the Odalith tags, which is another program where we send in, submit the heads. Um, under so, this so the order of bone, it, it's in the yeah, ear, right? And the, you can determine the, uh, the age of the fish? So they can determine the age, and this is something that a lot of people may or may not know, but in Canada, we don't fin clip very many of our fish. Right. However, they do a little thing when they're rearing the fry, and it basically it's something to do with changing the temperature in the water that they're bringing them up in, in the tanks. Mm -hmm. And they do this fluctuation where the little odolith bone will have a really weird growth ring, hmm. something to that effect. And that's unique to, to Canadian hatchery fish. No other fish will get that in the wild. Interesting. So when we send in the heads, they can pull that bone out and they can tell, even though we say wild fish, it could be a Canadian hatchery fish. Yeah, that's a good point by you because I know the US, they clip 100% of their that's fish. Right. Whereas in Canada, that number it's is like probably 10, I think. 10%. Yeah, I think it's 10. Right? Which is yeah. an issue that needs to be addressed, but that's another story. Well, yeah, and so by by participating in this and by the creel surveys back at the dock, when you give them the heads, it goes a long way in our way, our DFO's way for Canadian fish to be identified as wild or hatchery. It, and in that regard, we're actually tagging all our fish mm. with that system. Last year, we did almost a thousand fish here, which was 47% of the total areas. Wow, we're well, good DNA for you sampling. guys. So we're pretty happy about that. And they are obviously pretty happy about that to get all of that data. Well, it's a, it's a big undertaking, but it's uh, awesome that you guys are doing that and, and um, you know, much appreciated by the sports fishermen like myself and many others that get to enjoy this resource. So Yeah, and it, gets, it helps keep our fishery um, open and it helps us understand what fish we're catching and, and then we're more than willing to participate. Say there is a closure, but we can also say, listen, this does not need to be closed because we're not catching those fish. The clip. Right on the, the adipose. Uh, right on the adipose. So we snip that and put it on the card. Once I get the rest of the information about sex and length, these and these are tagged now. So now this follows the fish, that follows the fish, along with the other data that gets sent in. Gotcha. So these numbers are written down as well. On a hatchery fish, you obviously can't clip this fin, so they, they, take, they do it on the tail. Gotcha. But the rules are, if it's wild, you take it off the adipose. There it is, I got her down to a science. And how many years have you been doing this now? Three years. Yeah. We've part, been participating as just sending in heads and wild and hatchery heads for about five years or five. six years. But the in-depth stuff is is um, the last three years. Now, how this do you, like I know three years is it's a long time, but it can be a small sample size. Can you determine like what, where were the majority of the fish caught here be oh, from? Like Would just you know? all, all up and down the coast. Totally yeah. Random. It's crazy when you see, you know, Oregon fish being right. caught up here. Um, Stamp River, local fish, and uh, Robertson Creek. Yeah. Um, Chilliwack. Really? Yeah. Eh? yeah. Wow. So uh, and that's where those little tags come in, and that's how they tell. That's fantastic. And Dan, I think this is just another prime example of, of uh, sports fishermen 
really leading the science on this resource, you know, on the water every day, yeah. you know, uh, really know the ins and outs of, of, of salmon and taking this data and just reinforcing, you know, what, what we're standing up for, I guess, exactly. as, as yeah. sports fishermen, right? And try to advocating for, uh, you know, our, our rights on the water. And, and this just reinforces and helps our case and enables so many people to enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, the way we look at it is we want to do whatever we can. We have a really busy season up here. I mean, we go all day, every day for 120 days. But this piece, we volunteered for the most part our time to do it and keep it organized. We've added to the program. We're trying new things with the data. Um, and we're really sort of supporting all this science and, and in, in the end supporting the, the fish and the health of the, of the systems and proving out where we need help and, and where we don't. Yeah. And I also want to say to my grade nine science teacher who failed me in science. <laughs> you, you've got a master's, a master's in science now. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> no, I'm just a, merely a data collector, but you know <laughs> what? Awesome. Sounds good. No, you're doing a fantastic job, man. Awesome. Keep it going. It's, it's, uh, it's cool to see the process. The gaff release is a nice way to release fish at times. And there's times when I do use pliers as well. But, uh, you know, you don't need to handle the fish at all. It's a quick, harmless way to get that fish off the hook. Basically, just grab your leader, pull that leader tight, hook your gaff around uh, the shank. They pull into the hook. And with that pressure, just lift up and it will slide right out. And that fish just slides right off and he's gone. Quick and easy and harmless. We found them. Well, little patch here or a bite snap happening. We found the school. Right off the tail end of the rock of, of swale rock. Iconic swale. Yeah. Swale. Oh, what am I? No, no, we're, we're right. fooling people. We're <laughs> fooling people. <laughs> We're not telling them our secret location, <laughs> even though everybody who knows it's anything. Swell, swell, swell. Yeah. <laughs> they got this one on that, uh, the Ouija herring aid. So just grab that leader. Line. I like to try and keep the fish in the water a bit until I'm ready. They settle down up oh, sometimes. Just pull it right is. against that hook there, the pressure, and slide you right slide out. down the line to where the fish is. You get your hook, and then and try to get as close to the to the hook as you can, because then you, it's only a short distance to, to turn it upside down. And yeah. obviously, barbed, it's just going to yeah. pop right out. Yeah, perfect. Nice job. He lives again. Nice job. He smoked it off the clip. Nookie. Still, oh, I got one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Double up. <clears throat> Pop that clip. Pop the clip. Oh, yes, you did. did. You did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. Just gotta talk to them a little bit. Sometimes you just gotta talk to them. Were well, you saying we can really make this fun, Dan? Yeah, we put the boat in neutral and. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> see who can land their fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be exciting. Especially fishing so deep, right? Yeah. We a lot of times it's good to keep the boat in gear slightly to keep tension on the fish. Oh, 100%. You keep the tension, and if they run towards you, you're making up ground. Exactly. But now now we right. get to see what you're made of. <laughs> How fast can you reel? <laughs> oh, you're coming right at us, you. <laughs> There's my flasher. Oh, little nook. Nice, nice little chinook. chinook. Nothing crazy. Oh, it's Ooh. a nice fish. Here, I can get him. Oh, my. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always an adventure. Whew. That's a nice fish. <laughs> ah, thank you, buddy. OK, come with me. Thank you, thank you. Double bag. <laughs> Here. I'll lift it up. <laughs> Well, that's what I call a double header. Cue the circus music. <laughs> bring, <laughs> that's I used to like to say when things go sideways in sports, <laughs> bring on the dancing bears. <laughs> oh. oh, that went right through your net. No way. It did. What happened there? And you know what? It's still on. Gaff, gaff, gaff. 
<laughs> it went through the that net. That is a true circus. I swear to God, man. What happened? But, well, check it out. Oh yeah, look at that. It went I'm actually like net. out of breath here. <laughs> oh, well, you've been getting a workout today, man. We've been. Uh, that was so We're fun. on right now. It's like this bite's turned right on here. Yeah, that it's gonna was take cool. us 20 minutes to get this sorted out, but yeah. you know. We'll get that, we'll get that organized. But this is the, the fisherman's dilemma, right? How quickly can you get your rods back into the water? What are we, is that a challenge? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right, let's deal with these fish. That was super cool. I had an awesome time spending a couple days on the water with Dan and Eagle Oak Resort. We had unbelievable fishing and lots of laughs. The resort was top notch in all aspects and it has some of the best fishing on the west coast right at its doorstep. There's no bad days fishing in Barkley Sound. <laughs>